the fashion scorecard portion of the show. So if you, you say you've watched, you may know what's coming up. Um, we should get some pictures on screen in just a moment. And uh, unlike past uh, episodes, we're not going to pick just a couple of guys. We're kind of going to look at uh, golf over time. So here we are with uh, Ben Hogan, uh, one of the dominant forces, if not the dominant force of the 1940s. Of course, this picture is in black and white. Uh, we're looking at what I think we imagine as a classic golf outfit, a long sleeve button down shirt, the spotted kerchief and knickers, and even his uh, golf shoes are wing tipped. Uh, no hats, uh, pomade in his hair. Um, when you look at this, what do you think of the fashion of the 40s? Yeah, Bobby Jones was you know that southern gentleman and, and he had that classic swing. Um, actually wearing a Bobby Jones shirt that has his uh, has his silhouette on it. Um, but that that was that era. Uh, Walter Hagen um, famously showed up after a, a night of carousing and uh, went to the first tee in his tuxedo that he'd worn the night before. Um, oftentimes you would see guys uh, playing with a, they would tuck their tie necktie into their dress shirt and you know it was a game played by ladies and gentlemen and it, it is a, a game played with etiquette um, you know you're there you don't swear you don't yell you you're uh, you comport yourself um, in a in a manner that makes people you know want to invite you to your house their, their house um, that's usually also one of the great ways to do job interviews i would always take people out to, and see how they handle um, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat in the words of a you know wide world of sports uh, because you had get all of that in an 18 hole round you don't hit play 18 perfect holes or when you do uh, that's one that you remember for a long time so you can't get too high can't get too low and you know, again, Bobby Jones, who's pictured here, just uh, he probably was the epitome of the gentleman uh, golfer. Excellent. So we're going to move on a few years, decades, uh, to uh, Arnold Palmer, who's uh, pictured here as a dominant force of the 60s. And we begin to see uh, modern fashion peeping its head in. Uh, Interestingly enough, we also start to, as we were talking about Tiger, but even now we can start to begin to see uh, the golf player becoming the athlete. Uh, with, again, with more modern fashion, lighter weight fabrics, uh, he's adding the glove in. Um, the pole is cut close to fit his body, and the yellow pants look great on TV. This is a man who is aware of his image. Yeah, and it's amazing how fashion repeats itself. So. You're right. We went from the loose-fitting clothing um, that people played in the early 19th century um, to more form-fitting cl clothing. You know, Arnold did. Uh, you know, these these great guns he, he was trying to show off there, and you know, form-fitting and and the way he went about it too it was a classic style. I mean, it, he didn't have you know the most beautiful you know, upright you know the swing that that Bobby Jones had. He, he took a ferocious thrash at the ball. Um, and he was from Pennsylvania. He, you know, his dad was a, a deacon, was a PGA professional. And and he, he went about the game um, like everybody was his friend. Uh, and there was a reason that he, he was called the king. And, and throughout his life, you know, I'd see him many times at Bay Hill, and he'd be, you know, having his uh, his his breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and somebody would always come over and interrupt him. <laughs> I, you know, you kind of feel bad about the um, the fact that uh, he can't eat in peace, but he he never cared. He, he just said that's. Uh, he would sign every autograph. He he would let the you know people tell stories. I remember you know, 1962, and we were at Riviera, and you were over here, and 
like he's supposed to remember that. You know, he, he was terrific. He, he would just say, "Yeah, that that was some predicament I was in," uh, but I'm, I was pretty happy with the result. Excellent, excellent. That, the stories you're bringing in the pictures are fantastic. And uh, as we move to our next picture, we're going to get uh, the beginning of uh, my favorite thing: hats. Um, with the Australian, Greg Norman. Um, he was recognized for his distinct look. Here he is, you know, like I said, that signature hat with the Norman logo already on it. He's got uh, shark teeth on his uh, collar there to get that extra down under points. Yeah. Um, what do we have on him? Yeah, you know, Greg is arguably the, the best, you know, brand in golf. Um, you know, you look at how he took his Aussie roots and the great white shark um, had that flowing mane of hair um, when he didn't have his hat on. Uh, but you're right, the hat became part of his signature. Um, colorful clothing became uh, part of the signature. So the Greg Norman collection today, still one of the top brands in golf, but there's also Greg Norman wines um, that are excellent. Greg Norman you know, Wagyu beef, um, and that's good. So he's he, he's touched, you know, so many people, not just through his entertainment of you know, playing the game, um, but also, you know, what he's done um, through his licensing partners. And, and yeah, that brand uh, is iconic. A absolutely. Our, our next picture we've talked about about because it must Sunday Tiger took his signature look to a new level uh, with the red shirt and black pants on Sunday here he is all Nike but we know he has his own line with them uh, here he keeps the belt matching the pants but added some silver detail uh, Tiger's look began to transcend uh, golf everyone can wear what he's wearing everywhere they go yeah they um, again if if Greg, you know, Arnold Palmer took off to this level and Jack to another level and Greg Norman through, you know, um, through the international ranks and, and his licensing. But there aren't too many um, one name icons in, in the world. You know, we think of, you know, uh, Sting or Leonardo or Madonna and we had one and Tiger. And ratings went up, attendance went up. Um, you know, women loved them, men loved them. I mean, people, you know, across the, the racial spectrum loved how he, uh, you know, the excitement that he brought to the game and the energy he brought to the game. And it took a while because he, he was wearing the, those loose, baggy pants and shirts um, for a while, but the stylists at Nike are they're pretty good <laughs> yeah. and they came up with the form and the function that fit um, his physique and his, his uh, you know his need for for fabrics that could stretch as as he you know hit some of the most amazing shots in, in the history of golf now uh, our last picture here Ricky Fowler has moved his look uh, from the links to the streets. I know the picture's not up there yet. It's kind of spoiling it. There he is. Um, his monochromatic outfit is slightly oversized and a little loose fitting, changing the way we're going back to loose fitting. It's more casual than athletic wear. Uh, he matches the color of his oversized belt buckle to the outfit. Uh, the Puma branding is everywhere, including the flat rim baseball cap. And even his jewelry mat is that same audacious orange color, uh, completing his look. Yeah, um, you know, Oklahoma State, the uh, orange, you know, started early and he, he's, he's, he's kind of adopted that as, as his, his color. Um, he owns it, as, as they say. And, and that's part of branding is, um, to establish a look, whether it's through color or, or uh, the cut of, of clothes. 
Um, and he plays again with a, a certain swagger that is attractive and his smile is, he's got, you know, that thousand watt smile that, that, uh, you know, makes junior golfers excited, makes, you know, the men again, you know, love him as a young guy. That's, it's bringing some excitement to the game. Um, and, and he's got a, a pretty good, uh, female following, uh, my wife included. So, you know, he, he's a, just a terrific guy. Um, I get a chance to, to spend some time with him during the Ryder cups and, and, you know, has one of the most grounded views of, of golf and, and the special talent he's been given to, to perform in it. And, you, you like I, I'm a big Ricky Fowler fan. I, I love uh, every time he gets a chance to uh, to to show off and, and show what he can do. Uh, I know it was a disappointment for him not to be able to play in the Masters this year. Broke a streak of major championships that he's played in consecutively, uh, going back to I think 2010. Yeah. Yes. 